Praise the Lord. It's a Friday night broadcast at Guthrie Church of Faith. And I just appreciate all of you who are watching and uh, receiving from the Word of God from Guthrie Church of Faith Online. Tonight, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the things that have to be torn down in our life. We, um, all of us, born-again Christians, we want God's fullness in our life. I really believe that. Every born-again, spirit-filled Christian wants all of God in their life. Every person who's ever been born again, that's what they're going to want. Because your spirit has been changed from death to life, and now you have the nature of God in you, and you want more of God. So, why is it that we have such a difficult time sometimes with the walk of the Spirit, understanding the Holy Spirit? Well, a lot of times we have difficulty because there are things in our life that have to be torn out, torn down, that have to be rooted out in order for us to walk in the realms of the Spirit. Because for the most part, uh, if you're born in America especially, but any person born on this planet... We have been uh, indoctrinated with the ways of this world. And the, the, the truth is you're not of this world. You're from another world. And we need to learn what that world is all about, and that is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And we need to understand that that's where our residency is. That's where our citizenship is, rather. You might reside on earth, but you're a citizen of heaven. Your citizenship is from above. And so there's some things that have been in our life simply because of where we reside that have to be torn down so that we can understand better how we are to live in the kingdom of God. How we are to walk, walk when we're living after a spirit that we cannot see with our natural mind, our natural eyes, we can't comprehend with our natural mind, and we can't hear with our natural ears. Now there's times when the Holy Spirit speaks that He sure seems like we hear Him with our natural ears, but the truth is He's a spirit. And so most of the time, the majority of the time when He speaks, it's going to be in the realms of the Spirit. There have been times when He's spoken in the realms of the natural in the book of Acts, when uh, Paul was blinded by the light, they heard, they heard the voice speak. When Jesus was baptized, it said there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased. Another time in the Gospels, it says there was a voice from heaven. And some people said it thundered because they didn't hear it what, that, as being from God. Now, what I'm telling you is that there's some things in our life that get in the way sometimes when God is speaking. And it's because we're used to and we're programmed to hear, to see, to feel our way through life. But the Bible says we don't, we, we, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so there's some things that are going to have to be torn down. There's some attitudes that are going to have to be adjusted. There's some strongholds in our mind that have to be removed so that we can walk after the things of the Spirit. And that's a job that you have to perform in your life. But one of the ways that that job is performed of tearing down that stronghold is you submitting yourself to a ministry gift Okay, submitting yourself to a local church, getting involved in, in, in listening to what the pastor is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying through the pastor, or through the evangelist, or through the prophet, or through the apostle, or through the teacher. And God will use those gifts to tear down strongholds in your life. And for the most part, those strongholds are systems of thought things that you've been taught most of your life, a system of thought that's arisen in you that's empowered by your emotions. It's empowered by emotion. You, you, maybe it's empowered by fear. Maybe it's empowered by joy. Maybe it's empowered by uh, anger. But there is a stronghold in all of our lives. We have strongholds that have been erected based on our past experiences and are empowered by our emotions. Systems of thought. 
So let's look at Jeremiah for a moment, and let's see what uh, the Lord said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord, God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Now I want you to notice that there's two constructive words there, build and plant, but they come after four destructive sayings. Root out, pull down, destroy, and throw down. So, man, you might start flowing with the Holy Spirit or having a desire to flow with the Holy Spirit and you begin praying in other tongues. You're determined you're going to build yourself up on your most holy faith. You're going to pray in other tongues. And you begin to do that in spending time with the Lord, spending time praying in other tongues, spending time in worship, spending time seeking His face. And you start feeling like, this didn't do me any good. This is stupid. Why am I doing this? I don't understand what I'm saying when I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> There's nobody in here but me. Who am I worshiping? I know I'm worshiping God, but I can do that on Sunday morning. I, I don't need to do that all by myself. Nobody around here. Nobody can see what I'm doing. See? Those things have to be pulled down. Those are vain imaginations. We're, look, look, Let's quick look over there at uh, 2 Corinthians before we get into that too much further. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and start in verse 1. It says, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when, our, when your obedience is fulfilled. So Paul says that even though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. The things that the the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And he says there that these things pull down strongholds. And he goes on to explain what that is. Pulling down strongholds is casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when you're spending time praying in tongues, when you're spending time worshiping God, when you're spending time in your prayer closet and those thoughts come up that say this isn't doing any good, you don't make any sense. You're not getting anywhere. Nobody's hearing you. 
When your prayers are dry and seem as though they aren't answered, you can open up the Word of God and you can speak to those strongholds in the name of Jesus. You can say, I'm building myself up on my most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. When I speak in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. But I know that my God hears me when I pray because He is the author and finisher of my faith. And you can begin to just find different Scriptures in the Word of God, quote them over your life, say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm above only and not beneath the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. And you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. And you don't rely on your own flesh. Don't rely on the things of your mind and the things of your emotions. But you rely on the Word of God. And you allow the Holy Ghost to stir you up. And you keep pressing in. And you keep going forward. And you tear down those things that stand against you. And you'll see that you'll walk after the things of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit Himself will impart to you the power to stand when it seems like you can no longer stand. Paul said, having done all to stand, my brethren, stand therefore. Hallelujah. Putting on the whole armor of God. Praise you, Jesus. We're going to have to tear a few things down in our life, but it's going to be good when we do because those things that are coming down are the things of the flesh, the things that are holding us back, the things that keep us from from fulfilling all that God has for us to fulfill. And as they come tearing, tumbling down in our life, the Holy Ghost builds us up on the inside and we're able to stand in His power, stand in His might, and we're able to see mountains move and become plains before us. And the grace of God is made available unto us. Hallelujah. It's a humbling thing to allow strongholds to be torn down in our life, to grab a hold of them and rip them to pieces because we realize that those things feed our flesh. And the flesh is prideful. The flesh wants its own way. But when we walk in the love of God and we're humble before Him, we allow His Spirit to rise up in us. We can tear those things down. And walk in the fullness that He has for us. Amen. Praise God. Man, I wish that, sometimes I wish that, that I could just go on all night. But I know that um, I, I want to make these videos readily available to people. So I want to be able to put them on YouTube. And to do that, we have to keep it under 15 minutes. So I just want to thank you tonight. <laughs> for listening, for allowing me to follow the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm telling you, I have such a great time when I start getting into the Word of God, start thinking about how great the Holy Ghost is, start thinking about what He has in store for us as the body of Christ. There's some... You're, I'm, I'm going to tell you that the greatest days for the body of Christ are yet to come. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus... There's never a better day than right now. There's never a better time. There's never a better day than today. A better time than right now. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess Him as your Lord and Savior. Ask Him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And walk in His grace and His goodness. Until I see you again, God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll, we'll be here Sunday morning at 10.45 and Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And then we'll be back to our daily webcast next week. Um, I will be taking a break uh, on Wednesday. And we probably won't have a webcast for about a week. But I'll have... Uh, the recorded messages available that you can look at daily if you choose. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.